Hi everybody, it's Kim West, the Sleep Lady. And on this episode of the Gentle Parenting Show, I am going to talk about consistency because consistency is the secret sauce to successful sleep coaching. Wow, try to say that 10 times fast. <laughs> That's a lot of S's. Um, it really, it, I promise you, it really is, which is why I tell parents, don't even start uh, sleep coaching until you are 200% in and ready to follow through and be consistent for the whole process. Okay, so in order for us to really see the power of um, consistency and the things I want you to avoid once you get started in sleep coaching, I want to break down what's called intermittent reinforcement. It comes out of the behavioral psych field. It is the most powerful reinforcer of behavior, period, for all of us. So if you took Psych 101 or 102, it's, you know, the rat rings the bell. Sometimes a treat drops down. Sometimes nothing comes down. It makes the rat a little crazy. He starts, you know, ringing the bell over and over again because he can't figure out what affects the reward. What does he have to do uh, to uh, get the treat? So in adults, the uh, popular example is the slot machine. Apparently they have us filmed doing this or studied us adults doing this. We put our coin into the slot machine. We lose, 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 lose. And then if we are lucky enough to win, we will keep playing on the same machine, right? When actually your odds are higher if you went to the next machine, but really the best thing to do, I had a client who was head of marketing for a casino. She's like, I can't believe you know about this. Um, but really the best thing to do, by the way, is just cash in your chips and I don't know what, go out to dinner. Um, but apparently what happens is, is, you know, we put our coin back into the same machine. Either we're like, oh, it's my lucky day. This machine is broken. It's going to make me win again. I'm wearing my lucky necklace, whatever it is, we keep playing. Okay. So it's kind of like that rat on um, ringing the bell. Okay. So in inter intermittent reinforcement, how it applies to sleep coaching. I'm going to give you three examples because I just want to make sure you hear that these are three examples that are common that we fall into as parents, but we want to avoid once we start sleep coaching. So you may be sleep deprived. And so I want to make sure you hear that part. These are the things you want to avoid. All right. The first example is, um, you know, sometimes I, I feed you to sleep and then I put you into the crib and then I sneak out of the room and hope you stay asleep. And then I have a rule with my partner that, you know, if you wake up before midnight, then my partner goes in and pats you to sleep because we notice it's kind of easier to get you back to sleep in the beginning of the night. But then if you wake up after midnight, well, you could be hungry. So I'll go in and I'll feed you. And then if you wake up another time and it hasn't been three hours from the second time, uh, then my partner goes in, but now patting doesn't work. So he picks you up and rocks you to sleep. And then when you're finally asleep, he puts you back down. And then if you wake up again and it's like after five o'clock, I can't take it anymore. And we just bring you into our bed and hope to God you go back to sleep. And we stay there until we have to get up. Okay. Usually when I'm talking to a crowd, they start laughing because <laughs> they're like, okay, what were you in our home? How did you know that that's what our nights are like? Completely get it. By the way, we all do what we have to do to survive. So no judgment here. But imagine this from your child's point of view. So, and by the way, you can apply that example to, you know, a child in a bed or a baby in a crib. I was just giving you a baby in a crib or a toddler in a crib. Um, so imagine from your child's point of view, they, they literally have no idea what to expect when they wake up. I could be fed, I could be patted, I could be rocked, I could be brought into your room. Right. And so this is kind of like that, you know, 
that rat ringing the bell, like what's going to happen? I never know when a treat's going to come down. So what we don't mean to do is we actually create more crying in our children because or our babies because they don't know what to expect. The lesson then is that if we want to avoid responding inconsistently, we have to, of course, create a sleep plan. And then once we start with our sleep coaching plan, we want to respond consistently in the same manner, regardless of what sleep coaching method you pick. So that's number one example. Number two example of intermittent reinforcement that I want you to avoid goes, you know, I like, usually like to use this story. You know, I'm sitting at the playground. I had like a brutal night. You know, my baby was up a million times. I'm exhausted. I'm on my, I don't know what, cup of coffee. I decide to go get some fresh air, go to the playground and, you know, sit there and I you know, I'm talking to some of the other parents and, uh, you know, they see me yawning and they and I tell them like, I can't take it anymore. You know, my baby's up a million times, my toddler, whatever it is. Right. Um, and that parent tells you the infamous story that we've all heard, or at least we've heard about hearing about it. Uh, and that is, um, you know, I just let my baby cry it out. And I got to tell you, they cried like five minutes. They slept through the night. By the way, everyone hears that story. I've actually never met that child, um, but they have a great PR agent for sure because most of us have heard that story. It's not to be expected. And if you happen to be listening and are like, oh my God, that was my child, then you're so lucky. Um, but you're not, you're definitely an outlier or your baby is. Um, so, you know, Oh, I let them cry it out. It's what my pediatrician told me to do. It's what my sister did, my brother did, whatever my friend did. It worked like a charm for us. Life is good. So you're like, that's it. This is like the fourth time I've heard this and you 